Evolution, if you remember, is rooted in small changes in DNA sequences. The earlier during the course of development that these mutations occur, the higher the chance that genes fundamental to the growth of the organism are altered. Like, growing a foot out of your face levels of altered. Aren't you glad you're not a fly? Hence, mutations that facilitate evolution typically happen during the later stages of development, and the features that unite us all as chordates only really remain evident during our earliest days to weeks of existence. Considering how diverse vertebrate morphology is, the development or ontogeny of anatomical structures can therefore give us clues to our shared ancestry. Vertebrate development encompasses several key stages. Crash Course made an excellent overview on the process, plus I already made a separate video specifically on amphibian ontogeny. So please watch those because there's no use repeating what has been done or said. This video will instead focus on form and function in the realm of vertebrate development. And as a disclaimer, we give emphasis on the three most well-studied animal models for vertebrate embryology, which would be your amphibian, avian, and mammalian models. Now, before we dive into the development of the embryo, how do you make one? The business of making babies is all about how to get the sperm to the egg. Now, for this, we have two general patterns. Either spread it around, or you put it inside your partner. <laughs> now, both external and internal fertilization come with their own sets of pros and cons. For example, leaving your gametes out in the open means the mother needs less energy to spend on producing more complex egg structures. She can instead focus on mass production. Parang China lang, no? Quantity over quality. <laughs> the downside of which is predators. inside the house Cole. and having little to no choice who gets to father the offspring it's like going to a frat party and nine months later trying to figure out who the father is vertebrates who opt for internal fertilization are not confined to lay eggs in water or lay them at all in the case of mammals they also get to choose the fittest mates to sire their offspring but the whole process of having to grow copulatory organs, selecting mates, competing with rivals, protecting and nurturing the young, demand more time and energy. Time and energy. Both of which can spell the difference between life or death. After all that sexy time, we have touchdown. And also the establishment of the dorsoventral axes of the organism via the gray crescent. I would like to make a correction from my previous video. The gray crescent is actually opposite the sperm entry point. Cleavage is when the single celled zygote starts to divide to form a ball of many cells. In the ancient video, I made the type of eggs based on the amount and distribution of yolk had been discussed in full detail. So the egg type will then affect the type of cleavage the zygote undergoes. Holoblastic, which means cell division occurs throughout the whole egg. Meroblastic, cell division occurs only at portions of the cytoplasm with less yolk. Meron lang part na nagdi-divide talaga <laughs> ng maramihan. Meroblastic. And discoidal is an extreme form of meroblastic cleavage. So it's only really confined to a small cap of cell sitting on top of a mass expanse of yolk, which you often see in birds and some reptiles and egg-laying mammals. Cell division proceeds until such a time that a cavity inside the clump of cells is formed. Hello, blastulation. The blastula is composed of cells called blastomeres, specifically micromeres if they are in the animal pole, and macromeres if in the vegetal pole. 
In birds, the blastula is called the blastoderm or the blastodisc as a result of discoidal segmentation. In mammals, it's called the blastocyst. Sometimes also the blastodisc because that's what it ultimately becomes during the course of development. Bilaminar disc. While it looks different across major groups of vertebrates because of the amount of yolk and the distribution, as I said, what's important to remember is that the blastocele, the cavity, is formed. The blastocele is formed primarily to allow cells to move around and to prevent certain cells from coming into contact and interacting with other cells that they shouldn't be coming into contact and interacting with. These are just some of the ways that individual cells move around. But why do cells have to move around? Because their fates haven't been determined yet. Imagine if a cell that started dividing already came out predestined to be a foot. And right next to it is a cell destined to be, say, the heart. And right next to that, a cell perhaps destined to be the eye. And they did not shuffle themselves around in the correct positions, but they just kept dividing. In the long run, what would your organism look like? It's like a foot next to a heart next to an eye. More cell division and more cell migration eventually pushed the blastocele out of the picture to make way for a new cavity. Hello, gastrulation. You know it's gastrulation when these things happen. The blastopore debut. In other words, Uranus takes its first peek into the world. My M, ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm, M. The three tissue layers are established. Gastrocele, as the primitive gut, appears. The anteroposterior and left and right axes are slowly becoming defined. The formation of the notochord starts here. The main difference in birds is instead of a blastopore, you first form a primitive streak, and then this progresses to be the primitive groove. Now the space for cell migration is still limited to the blastodisc, so imagine this happening on top of a ball of yolk. The process from getting to neural plate to tube are fairly similar for amphibians, birds, and mammals. The important events in this stage would be first the formation of the future nervous system after which this stage is formed. Hello, neuralation. Next, umaarte yung M. This means the three germ layers are becoming more and more subdivided and differentiated. In the previous stages, you just have ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. This time, you start to see differentiation of the mesoderm into like the epimere, mesomere, hypomere, the somatic and splanchnic layers. These kinds of things start to appear. All of this is now in preparation for the next phase, organogenesis. So many things to memorize. The most common sense way to remember the major organs derived from each of the germ layers is to peel yourself layer by layer. Remember that you developed this way so you can quite literally use yourself as a learning tool. Why the gut of all things? Why is that the first to form? Because the point of life is to live it. And in order to live, we have to eat. Why the brain next? Because in order to live, you not only have to eat, but you also have to not get eaten. The nervous system and sense organs help us accomplish both. If there's anything that has stuck with me in studying embryology, it's what Hank Green from Crash Course said in that video that I'm asking you to watch. We are just a butthole attached to a wad of cells. <laughs> it's very humbling, isn't it? Na nagsimula lang talaga tayo lahat na assholes. So ano ba pinagmamalaki natin? 
Kaya enjoy na lang natin yung buhay. To learn more about the details of vertebrate embryology, particularly the fate of the germ layers, they're all in your reference materials. So please read them. I understand that 2D pictures need a bit more mental gymnastics to really understand the process. So here are also a few videos, and I'll leave them in the description as well, to help us all better visualize the key stages of vertebrate development. I'll see you in the next one where we will talk about the other strategies of vertebrates in terms of how they ensure that their embryos actually survive. I'll see you in the next one.